staple because I really want to see more diversity. But we'll ju uh, jump right into the game. Um, we have the Zulog Mirror. It's, it's like a really interesting matchup. It's, in my opinion, one of the hardest matchups to play because bot control is so important in it. Yeah. And um, novice Hearthstone players don't really uh, realize it, but in these mirror matches, especially in minion-based decks, uh, it's important to know where you stand in terms of uh, the matchup dynamics. So, uh, one player is always the aggressor, and the other player is always the defender. So, uh, usually in a Hearthstone, who goes first, running in card games as well in general, whoever goes first he's usually the aggressor because he can attack first and the other guy uh, you know takes the defending position tries to establish board control and turn it away from there but in Hearthstone you have stuff like the coin which can you know switch the tempo around so it's really really dynamic matchup I think you can actually see it in more more games like for example counter mirrors are like this as well um, you know I've seen uh, you know, you said that the Zoo Mirror is one of the more interesting matchup, and uh, I can put, you know, Midrange Hunter Mirror actually uh, yeah. as equally as entertaining and very skillful matchup, just for uh, for the reasons that we just mentioned. Um, but how how are the things really going now? Uh, from from the looks of it, Zapkel is, uh, you know, the, the aggressor apparently in this matchup. He's running low on cards, but he has a huge board position, so Stas will have to stabilize here now. So what's his play? Is he just going for straight for the uh, implosion, you know, um, or you know, try to defend her here and delay for one turn and see if he get he can get like implosion with it. My juggler, I guess he's choosing the corner. Uh, like the imp the good implosion here could get you far ahead, but it's too much of a risk because if you do not hit it, you <laughs> might fall behind too far to catch up again. And like the knife juggle implosion, the turn after is just too strong to pass out on it. Yeah. But actually Zapkill also has knife juggler implosion, so this will be uh, a lot of blow trading and I think Zapkill will come ahead again. Just because like, he has the, the implosion juggler himself and um, you know, uh, for, for every juggle that lands on the Im gang boss, another minion spawns. Yeah, but like knife juggler implosion is it's such a good uh, bounce back oh, mechanic. Oh, uh, only hitting for two is really bad here. Yeah, yeah not only hit for two. Also, the imp that spawns. Oh! Can, yeah. Wow, so this is literally the worst thing that could have happened besides maybe hitting all face. Yeah, uh, really bad juggles here for him. Uh, let, let's see what Zatkyo can do. Uh, uh, like, you cannot really do worse than this. Yeah. You should also try it first, yeah, as he does. Because he might. Uh, not get the place if he I mean, he, fall. He, he gets a two as well, but, way but he's al he's already ahead on the board, so he doesn't have to bounce back with it. Yeah, like it was so important for Stars to hit that one strong. Well so he, yep, yeah, it's at this point it's basically over. That kill kept the board control over the whole game, got ahead early, and like Zoo doesn't have this huge comeback me mechanics you need there. And the one he had, like the knife juggler implosion, failed on him, so we had a pretty convincing win. So Zapkill is down to Druid and Warrior against World of Druid and Shaman, and I guess he just goes with the Druid here just because he doesn't really want to risk, you know, queuing Warrior into any of those decks actually. I, his Druid is also, I don't feel like that it is so strong against his other. Uh, Oh, against the other decks from Stars as well, because like the Shaman, if he gets a big board with those mid rangey minions, Druid can't deal with it, but we don't know yet what yeah. kind of Shaman it is. I mean, whatever kind of Shaman it is, I... Okay, so he kills the warrior, and yes, Stas goes for Shaman. Okay, and it's a patron warrior. Okay, so how, how, how does this matchup really perform? Because we know how Shaman against Warrior typically ends, at least pre-VRM, like Shaman would usually win. 
just because he spews so many minions on the board that really the, the warrior uh, finds it hard to, to come back. Uh, historically, like the shaman is really favored in this because the warrior only has one brawl, for example. Yep. I feel like the patron deck is better, at <laughs> least, because it has all those whirlwind mechanics. They are like, yeah, the ghoul contests the haunted creeper really, really well. Oh, that's good. That's really good. This is the yeah. exact totem he needed, basically. <coughs> Uh, we've actually seen a lot of patron warriors in recent tournaments. I mean, uh, in Dreamcast Bookers, we mentioned it uh, earlier in the broadcast. Uh, we've seen a lot of patron warriors in it, and this is one of the highest level of competition, not just some nice random seal. invitational. And uh, I think it, it was Forsen who said it's good to say we don't know what type of warrior he's playing, because previously uh. it was just control warrior. And, even the control warriors didn't really vary in style, it was, you know, one or two lists maximum and the, the variations were minor, but, you know, I'm really excited to see a new, like, entirely new uh, spec of warrior with I think it makes the games that much more interesting. And it's still not really figured out what's the best list for it yeah. and how to play it perfectly. And we've seen so many misplays. Uh, uh, people are comparing comparing it to rogue decks because you really need to know how much damage you have and how much stuff you can play on each turn and you have really uh, you have to plan ahead really you know several turns ahead yeah it's like people or for example the person who played it a lot compared it to the old miracle row yep. like exactly in that level so so he will get a taurus in here but uh, and it's already really good. These are the free whirlwinds. Free whirlwinds, man, are amazing, especially yeah. against shaman. I mean, you can do so much damage. Basically, clear the board if it wasn't for this, uh, you know, healing totem and defender of Argus. But Emperor is really what makes the patron warrior really strong. Uh, yeah, and also against the shaman, typically they have many low minions on the board, so. He can mm. get like a good patron turn. But with the flame tank he kind of blocks it like if he would have kept the haunted creeper there uh, without the buff, he would have such a good patron turn here. Yeah, the, the big problem is these three mana uh, three health minions which are actually outside the range of the double whirlwind. So this yeah. uh, Defender of Argus that came down early may, might be the, the MVP here. I, I, you just, uh, you know, Fire Elemental, right, and, or even Hex, like, I would argue that Hex is maybe another option that you that like, has to consider. there aren't any yeah. I, really oh. better Hex targets, mm -hmm. yeah, so, and he's so far ahead that he has to pressure the Hex is just given even more, but he still gets a good clear with the Fire Elemental as well and can keep the pressure up. I think it's really hard for the warrior here. Oh, and there he, at least now he can go for the for a good patron turn. And I think he should be able to bounce back with this because the spiders who spawn are also can also get 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 killed. Yeah, the problem is he doesn't really have a commanding shout. This would have been this would have made it so much. Uh, you know, more amazing turn, like a board swing. He should well, yeah, he should well win first before he attacks. Everyone. Like, at least he has the battle rage to also yep. draw a lot of cards. Like, this is his comeback in this matchup for now. Okay, so he'll draw so many cards here. Uh, four cards for one mana, it's pretty good deal. Like, I want this on, on my freeze mage. <laughs> Probably not gonna happen anytime soon, but yeah. yeah. He's starting to trade and gets even more patrons. Yeah. Everyone is slowly getting in here. <laughs> and the rope is burning. It's also a problem. Many mentions with this deck. The animations are partially so slow. Like we saw, I think it was Alash, 
Yeah. Getting really wrecked by you, you the saw slow the, animation. You saw the unfortunate boom bots, right? I mean, yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, this has to suck, and he was pretty upset, but uh, understandably so. What do you do then now as the shaman? Like uh, the this uh, web lord really screwed you over because you cannot really play uh, anything besides Lich Belcher. Uh, uh, okay, here without, we go. without AOE, it's so hard to bounce back against this, yeah. those patrons. He still has a lot of life though, but he's running out of cards. I mean, Noctilon will resupply him with Murlocs, but will it be too late? Yeah, with the Taskmaster, he has a good turn. I think the warrior has everything he needs to deal with the shaman and can get in a good position to bounce back into this game now. Yeah, he will even clear the new. Like, do you? Yeah, uh, you just cleared the the, the web lord as well. Yeah, but from the shaman's, uh, from the warrior's perspective, you have to kill everything mm -hmm. on the board from the shaman because that's always the threat of like a flame tank totem or something like that. So it's always better to kill even the totems. So, Shaman. Wow, it's... Really don't see him coming back from this, like there is no lightning storm. Uh, I guess he has to Azure Drake here and hope for lightning storm and then hope for big rolls. I mean, uh, uh, so you can clear everything including the... Uh, So it's not over yet, but he has to start clearing stuff. The problem is you cannot really clear these these patrons. Like you can yeah, clear one of them. The problem about clearing the patrons is you need to clear them exactly yeah. or else they're just spawning more and more patrons. Oh, this will be an absolutely huge um, dead spite next time. Yeah. It's like he starts to get the control, the pure control of the game like this. Nothing the Shaman can do other than getting a big lightning storm off against the sport now. Yeah, he, he has to get it. Otherwise there's no coming back. Lava Shock's not it. He has to play Azure Drake and really hope for the board. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if he doesn't get it, he's dead. Or maybe we'll buy a few turns, but these Feral Spirits will actually spawn, spawn more patrons. <laughs> yeah, but I think he should be he should be dead if he plays the Feral Spirits, because that's the Grom waiting with the Dust Bite. Yeah, that's true as well. But so that seems like he doesn't decide. Oh, yeah, that was a misplay. Yeah, this was a big misplay. Like he could have saved an extra. F like he could have snuck in a flame tongue totem. Yeah. Uh, so this will be game, uh, and that kill goes up 2-0 now. Uh, he's really, you know, looking uh, favorite yeah. to take the series. Patron Warrior seems to do really good against the Shaman here. Now we know. So, uh, Warrior and Warlock locked for that kill. There's Druid against Warlock Druid Shaman. So if you're Stas, you just kill the zoo, right? Yeah, we know it is the zoo because yeah. we just saw it already. And no, uh, in, in I would actually leave the the druid versus the druid mirror last, I guess. Like I would try to win uh, with shaman in game four if I manage to come back with the zoo, uh, just because I, you know, for, for the deciding series, uh, you know, why not just. You know, I have a mirror there, and... You try to... In theory, you should try to get your good matchups in first. Yeah. So you get more information about the opponent's deck. Yeah. And my Hearthstone just crashed. I just have some things. I must protect the wife. 
for Doomhammer. So yeah, it's not going to be Zoo versus Druid, it's going to be Shaman versus Druid, so not as we anticipated. But I guess it's... I think the Shaman has decent chance, chances as well, just because it's also very minion based deck, and really the only way Druid can come back is with a good swipe, swipe and the swipe doesn't really clear totems, right? And higher health minions and... Um, like, one swipe alone... Yeah, isn't that strong at all against the shaman? Like, you, they most likely have two or three health minions you have to deal with. So, the swipe alone isn't that strong. If you get, a, for example, a Greg and swipe, it is really strong now and can like bounce you back into the game. Yeah, I remember when jo uh, the shamans were common uh, in tournaments and while well, like many many months ago. <laughs> Uh, a lot of Druids actually play uh, Talon, uh, I mean Thalmos for, for the yeah. swipe, just because you need to clear these two health minions and this is your only way. Like if you get any leeway to the Shaman, you just die. There's so much damage coming, you know, uh, there's interactions with Defender of Argus, some Shamans all, also run Bloodlust, so it's the threat as well. But... Yeah, the Druid has a really good starting curve here. Yeah. This is one thing going on for him. Also, an interesting tech in the Shaman is the Black Knight. Can be, can get really strong. It will at least get the first body of, of a Belcher. And he has the coin as well, so he can directly counter the Belcher uh, when, yeah. when it's played on turn 5. Because this will be the turn 5 of the Druid, 100%. So Stas is thinking how, how he wants to tackle this. I guess, you know, trying to rock Biter here and clear up is the way to go. It should start dealing with the board. There's no way he can leave a board like that up. Because the Druid will just develop even further yeah. with those mid-range minions and get the pressure in. The, the question is, do you want to Urchok here and then clear it? Uh, you know, the, the, the Pile the Shredder, or do you want to leave Urchok for stuff like Fledge Belcher? But I guess this is the Fledge he has Black Knight yeah. already. Okay, so he's not going to use the Rock by the Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it puts out the flame, uh, flame, tank totem. And the just, shade has to come out now. Yeah. Flame tank is just too strong to leave it, and like on 4 HP, the shade should also be, like, safe. So it's okay to reveal it here. And as we talked, as we said earlier, this black knight is getting at least some value here. That's so, a oh decent yeah. swipe here for him. Mm, very good swipe. And now because the shade the shade is getting dangerously big and he has to consider if he wants to hex it. I uh, think he has to hex it at this point soon. Yeah, or but, but, but this rock fighter. Yeah, but it seems like Dr. Boom it will come next turn. Or, yeah, oh that's God. the problem, but you have to find some way of dealing with the uh, with the shade. And maybe he should have considered if he didn't Earthshock the Shredder earlier, yeah, he could have he could have kept it for the Shade, and maybe that line of play would have turned out better for him because now he's in a really awkward position, and he has to exit. That also makes him not develop his board at the in this turn because he's on a or can get nothing else out there. Yeah, but there is. And turn seven, back to boom. And Dr. Boom is always great. So he... Okay, this will slow it down a bit, but I don't... Still not that strong. Like... Uh, but but he, he'll, he'll taunt here as well, just to just to delay it for as much as possible and try to find the Dr. Boom answer. Like, bots like that are the thing which makes Shaman strong against yeah. Druid, because, like, how does a Druid deal with a 1-3 minion? Yeah, he... Like, Wrapping it would be like over It's a free because, minion. It's yeah. it's a card for nothing. It's you. It, it's putting you on, on a card disadvantage. Um, he has the boom bots here. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't. Get, oh god, this is so awkward. He, he has will, to hero power now. Yeah. Because as long as they are on one HP, he has to hero power them because else the healing totem will bounce them back. 
Why is he not playing? Uh, I would have actually Lord and then Innervate Hero Power, I guess. Or. Like, the, the Innervate is basically a coin in that position then. Yeah. So. Yeah, but the Bulges are so strong against the Shaman. And again here. Yeah. At least he has the Fire Elemental turn. But he goes for the Rock Binder. I kinda like developing the Fire Elemental because yeah. it's perfectly on curve. The other play would be Rock Biter and Sludge Belcher. But the Sludge Belcher just gets traded in with the Doctor Boom yeah, again. I don't like this at all. The one HP Doctor Boom stays alive and the Shaman really has nothing to deal with it and he will most likely Fire Elemental at next turn. I guess he wants to just snipe something directly with Fire Elemental, some, something big like the Doctor Boom, because he would have to trade here and leave it vulnerable, but... Uh, I don't know, yeah, he will kill this, oh, this is... It's really strong for him. You don't, you don't really actually see this play a lot. Most people would still, yeah. you know, let the Doctor Boom go and draw more cards, but he has another Agent of Lore, he's high on health, so he doesn't really need any more any more threats or you know healing uh, this is a perfect play you can you can do here the only thing you would think about is how is getting closer to the combo at this point because you kind of you don't have to, you have quite good minions but if the druid gets too far ahead yeah uh, yeah so he withdrawing the only thing would be drawing into combo to finish the game like soon and stars already thought he was bad just because of the combo, so he kind of knew it. That's something you always have to play around when playing against the Druid. Okay, still no combo in hand, but he will trade the Fire Elemental here and leave a pretty empty bar for the Shaman. And Shaman is pretty much in big trouble, and his only play here is Neptune into Fellow Spirit, I guess. Um, yeah. you, you need to start developing this bar basically, or. But it's still not a bad board for him. No, 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 not by a long shot. Like he, he, if he actually runs a Bloodlust, he can actually just kill the Druid uh, if he draws it on time. He, he'll, he'll have to lose this Snapsilon here to the big game hunter, but still, you know, the uh, the Druid will have to go into so much taunts. Well, got to see what, what he can get and... I think you'll probably... I've got the okay, yeah, yeah. So if, if there's the play, I guess you just Sylvanas here. Yeah. Sylvanas just is so strong, bot development, and he knows the opponent's hand is only filled with, like, you see five cards, but yep. he knows it's only Murloc, so... Yep. Even though the code light is, could be really helpful here. It can, but it's also giving two cards 